very good morning once again i am back with another issue which uh, is of direct concern to us as human beings i can never uh, get tired or fed up of talking about these so crucial things in our uh, life i don't know whether you are fed up by now listening to me but you have the choice of switching off and uh, not listening to these uh, weekly programs but i will go on primarily because i feel that this is the most essential part of life this is what constitutes quality of life enrichment of life fulfillment of life much more than what money can give you or status can give you or your assets can give you these are such important things which make so much of a difference so today i come with this uh, topic which is uh, generally referred to in management jargon as win win situations this is uh, you know in contrast to the other three which is win lose lose win and lose lose it's very funny that when a person tries to create a situation where i will not lose and i will not allow the other person to win if he takes up the stand that i will win at any cost and i will make the other person lose more often than not what happens is that it becomes what i will call as a lose lose situation eventually both lose there's a chinese proverb which says before setting out to take revenge dig two graves one for your enemy and one for yourself because in this process of trying to take revenge in this process of trying to put the other person down you are literally you know killing yourself maybe not physically but definitely you are killing yourself and you are spoiling your own quality of uh, uh, life you are you know making your life miserable you are becoming unhappy so let us start with uh, understanding very fundamental please excuse me if it looks as though i am repeating things which are so obvious but we need to keep reminding ourselves of these things from time to time right so let's talk about the fact that again the same thing that relationships matter more than anything else in life no other single factor in life can make me as happy or as sad as good and bad relationships at the same time let us accept that there is no such thing as ideal relationships i don't think there's a single human being in this whole world who can say that all my relationships are perfect i love everybody everybody loves me as you are well aware gandhi ji had his uh, enemies mother teresa had her detractors so however good you are whatever you may try to do to others there will always be people who will be unhappy with you okay now one is those who are unhappy or who criticize and that's the end of it you can leave it but what about those with whom you have to have an ongoing relationship for whatever the reason it may be your family member it could be a colleague in office it could be a neighbor or part of your extended uh, social group there are so many areas where you do have to essentially continue with uh, you know having some form of relationship now if that relationship is turning out bad what do you do first quickly let me tell you about uh, you know criticism it starts with somebody criticizing you saying bad things about you putting you down and that's how the unpleasantness starts and you feel that why is this person saying these things why can't this person be nice to me and that's how this whole uh, you know situation often uh, starts that people are criticizing uh, you when people are criticizing you i would like you to stop for a moment not feel overwhelmed by what the other person is saying and not get into that impulsive or defensive note and ask yourself what sort of criticism is this which category does it fall under the first one could be which we often neglect constructive criticism a criticism which will 
highlight to me where I'm missing out and where I can improve and what can I do about it. I think we should welcome such criticism. The other uh, could also be concerned criticism. The person doesn't have any solution. The person does, is not offering any uh, alternatives to you, but is showing concern. I feel bad for you because this, this, this. I think we need such people around us. It is as absolutely essential that we have a few people around who are criticizing us, but out of concern that I feel you are going on the wrong path. I feel this will get you problems. I feel this is not going to be good for you, whatever may be their uh, 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 reasons. Then uh, there is this criticism which is referred to as surgical. How a surgeon cuts you open, no? that sort of uh, 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 criticism. They are unsympathetic. They are harsh with you, but they cure you. People who criticize and say, no, I will not allow you to do this. Come on, you have to change your method and you have to do this, this, this. Like a surgeon will cut open, remove the tumor, stitch you up. The same way you have this surgical uh, criticism. Only the fourth one is when a person attacks you. Maybe for personal gain, maybe because the person has taken a dislike to you or whatever it is. There's nothing constructive in it. There is no concern in it. There is no improvement or surgical you know, healing in, involved in it. But the person is being uh, critical. Those are the type of people you need to be you know, careful about. And these are some of the areas which I'm pointing out where we need to be uh, you know, taking cognizance and doing something about it. The good news is that you can do something about it. Every time that you have somebody criticizing you, somebody putting you down, somebody being rude to you, somebody being unreasonable with you, please understand that there are ways and means of doing it. And we have to learn those skills. That is why I'm here every Saturday, helping you to understand that there are always ways and means to improve your quality of life, your relationships, whatever you want to uh, call it. So, first let's understand why conflict occurs, why differences occur, why arguments take place. Then it is obviously because of differences in perception, differences in goals, differences in methodology, ego issues, whatever it may uh, be. But let us accept that two human beings when they come together cannot always have, you know, a sort of equality. In fact, in management jargon, there's a very interesting quote which says, if you are, let's say, a big boss in an organization and you have two managers working under you, two people who hold leadership roles, they are decision makers and they contribute towards the well-being of the organization or institution. The quote says, if you have two managers who always agree with each other, throw out one of them. Hmm? Not two people who are fighting all the time, but two people who are always in harmony and always agreeing. And the court says, throw out one of them. What does it mean? In simple words, if both of them think in the same direction, if both of them take the same decisions, if both of them have the same solutions to issues, that why do you have to pay salary to two managers? Get rid of one of them and one can do the work, isn't it? The idea is that if there is another person, a second manager, who is counter to the first one, who has his own ideas, who has his own techniques, who has his own thinking, it is then and then only that you get the benefit of having what they say that two minds are better than one. In fact, even in teamwork, there is a good proverb which says, when you make a uh, team when you you know start making a team one of the first things that happen is conflict anywhere anytime you have two children and you are trying to discipline them and tell them you have to eat this you have to do this and there will be a conflict you may have experienced you are going in a vehicle somewhere 
and one child can sit next to the window the other has to sit in the middle of the uh, back seat and this one starts screaming i want to sit on the window uh, side it can start with something as small and as simple as that or it could be major decisions which involve huge sums of money and lives of so many people whatever it is but the storming takes place once the storming takes place it gives way for you to start putting things in order so here was this mother who was having constant problem with the child sitting next to the window or something and she made a chart she said monday this one tuesday that one wednesday this one thursday that one and if one day is missed out it automatically passes on to the next day so that even either of the children get equal uh, time to sit on the window seat as simple as that put up the chart <coughs> and tell them there it is you have to follow it see when that you know uh, the rules and regulations are laid down what happens then the performance starts so this is what we need to uh, you know, uh, understand in various uh, situations whenever we come across now there is also a chart which shows how you should handle conflict sunita has made it into a very nice descriptive you know uh, chart so like they show in these management uh, uh, management uh, uh, now what do you call it uh, uh, presentations we have a graph you will see that graph uh, right now yes here it is what happens is on the x axis you have cooperativeness that means you are obliging you are being nice to the other person on the y axis that is the vertical part of it you have assertiveness i want my way now where do we stand in this the first one if you see the left bottom side it shows avoiding that means you don't get into the conflict at all sometimes it is good to avoid conflict when either you are very worked up you are very emotional you may lose your temper or you may break down and cry you may get into that situation which is not very nice for you that is one time when it is better to avoid the conflict by time another situation could be that you do not have enough inputs you don't know all the matter even in a family your spouse or some adult is coming and saying you know what your child did and this happened and that happened now you don't really know what your child did and why the child did that so can you avoid by saying give me some time let me find out the details i'll come back to you and then i'll listen to whatever you have to say so there are situations where it is good to be uh, avoiding gain time get information prepare yourself better and then jump into it okay now you go up the ladder above avoiding what do you see uh, uh, there people who are trying to be totally dominating totally assertive people who say that i am going to win under any cost i want the power i want the authority i want everything if you have a situation where you can override the other person maybe sometimes you'll succeed but not always and even if you succeed at that moment remember the person will be looking for an opportunity to put you down whether it's a corporate situation or a family situation you have proven yourself right you have asserted your authority and you have pushed the other person down the person has to give up for the person is very bitter the person is not at all happy right let's go to the right side bottom accommodating which is the opposite of competing okay where you are willing to sacrifice your own view point in order to satisfy the other person okay pal let him be happy it's okay i don't mind i'll give up whatever it is a lot of people do it they do it in organization they do it in families they do it in social setups under the mistaken belief that if i give up if i surrender if i allow the other person to have his way he will be nice to me unfortunately it doesn't happen that way the other person gets used to your being accommodative and not asserting yourself 
and the person's demands actually keep going higher and higher. So let's understand, let's be very clear that surrendering, giving up, collab, you know, uh, accommodating the other person is not an answer to a conflict situation. Now, as we go higher up on this graph, in the middle, you see what we call as compromising 50 50. And a lot of people think now the problem should be solved. No, you take half and I take half. No, it doesn't work. You uh, remember that children's story where that uh, cat was supposed to divide the loaf of bread among two monkeys, or was it the other way around? I don't remember. And when he breaks it, one piece becomes bigger than the other. So the other one starts complaining, no, 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 his uh, bread is bigger. So what he says is, okay, I'll take a bite from this and make it smaller. He takes a bite and the result is now this one, this piece has become smaller than the other. So the other one is again complaining, no, 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 his has become big. So he says, okay, I'll take a bite from there and I'll make it equal. Finally, you know what happens. The cat gets to eat the entire loaf of bread and both the monkeys are left uh, hungry. Something like that happens when you are trying to do a compromise. Both are unhappy because we have this tendency of looking at the glass not being half full, but being half empty. And also remember whether you like it or not, something which I keep reminding people that it is not enough that I got something. Why did the other person get something? If he is happy, I am automatically unhappy. And both of them think in the same direction. So having discarded all these options, what do we finally move on to? And that you see in the top right side of this graph. What we call as collaborating. An attempt to find a consensus by, I mean, to find a solution by consensus. I'll tell you why and how this works. Whatever you may say, human beings are unique. Human beings are different. The wants of human beings is inevitably unique, individual, differing from the others. So if one person identifies what is more important to me and realizes that what is more important to the other person is something different, then you can have a give and take. Somebody may be looking for status. Somebody may be looking for ego being pampered. Somebody may be looking for money. Somebody may be looking for convenience. Somebody may be looking for work being passed on to someone else. It's not very difficult to identify what the other person needs and what this person needs. I give it sometimes in management uh, um, programs by a simple thing. You've gone for a, you know, workshop, a training workshop. It's a full day program and you're very, very, very hectic. Lunch break has been declared. There's a caterer who has brought, you know, plates of meals. All the individual items, roti, rice, palya, these, that is kept in one, one tray and it is being given. Now there are 30 participants, so he has brought 30 uh, uh, trays, right? What happens is a friend of yours tells that I got a severe headache. I need to buy a tablet here, but that shop is little far away. You have a bike, can we go on the bike and get it? You say, okay, five minutes, we'll go and get it. Then we have, you know, 55 minutes left for lunch. So you take this guy on your bike and go there. When you go there and while he's buying his tablet, you look into the next shop and there's a huge discount sale up to 80% off and you get enamored. You walk in and you find some very interesting, very fascinating deals. And you start exploring, you start looking this one, that one, how much will this cost? How much do I have to pay for this? How much do I have to do that? So, so slowly, 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 you have spent half an hour there. Then you say, sorry, yaar, I have this good deal. Anyway, I got this fantastic thing. Come, let's go back. Both of you land up there. In the meanwhile, what happened was that the caterer had given out 28 uh, uh, plates and two were left over. And he looks around and he doesn't find anybody who's coming to eat. So this fellow eats up one of the plates. He's also hungry. He eats up one of them. Now you landed back 
there are two of you and there's only one plate meal left. What do you do? How do you resolve? A lot of people will say divide into two. Get an empty plate. If there are two chapatis, take one each. If there is so much rice, take half each. This, this, this and do it. That is what I referred to you and showed you in the graph as compromising. But believe me, human nature is such. Person says, no, I got only half. And the blame game starts. If this fellow had not asked me to go and buy that tablet for him, I would have had my meal. Does the other person acknowledge? No. He says, in five minutes, I bought the tablet. We could have come back and had a meal. You spent half an hour looking at that uh, sale and buying things there. That is why it happened. Both are right, both are wrong. Both are in a conflict situation. And then I give this little bit of food for thought. What could be the possible alternatives of collaborating? Now, if you have that mindset, you can think of 20 different ways. One person is not particular to have food at one o'clock. He can have it later at two, three o'clock, take a break from the afternoon session and go and have uh, this thing. So he says, okay, you have the meal. You pay me for a plate meal. Later on, I'll go and have uh, uh, food in a restaurant and come back. So both of us get full meal. But you pay for it because you, you, know, you are having the meal right now and I have to go out and uh, get it. Or you lend me the bike. I don't have a bike. You lend me the bike. I'll use your bike. Maybe I'll go to my cousin's house nearby and have a nice homemade meal and come back. Maybe we can try out something different like this, this, this. Now, this comes out of this factor, which I keep reminding you of, which we call as empathy. Putting yourself in the other person's shoes. A lot of conflict can be resolved if you can think from the other person's angle. That is what win-win situations are. If you can stop thinking only from your point of view and do it from the other person's point of view. See, here is a lovely little thing which uh, Sunita has made out. What you want and what they want. It inevitably overlaps in certain areas, but it is also different in certain areas. Where it overlaps becomes your win-win situation. I'll also give you a simple little homework, which you can do at your leisure sometime, maybe over the weekend or later, whenever you're uh, free. Take a big sheet of paper, draw a vertical uh, line. On the left side, write down this criticism or this putting down or this rudeness or whatever you're experiencing from somebody. Identify that person, have that person's name in your mind and write down on the left side, what are the things that that person does which upsets you or makes you angry or puts you down? One below the other, one below the other, you write it down. On the right side, in the second uh, half, you write how you respond to it. This is his behavior. You identified it and you know that he's been going through this behavior. How do I respond to it? So if I write that, you know, he uses bad words. And on the right side, I reply that I shout at him and tell him not to use bad words. Or in the left, I uh, you know, write that uh, he has taken money from me and he has not returned it. On the right side, I will write down what I did. When I had to pay him something, I held back the payment because I said that he owes me money. So I didn't give it to him. So like that, you write down on the right side the uh, activities or the methods or the attitude that you have, right? And then tear off that sheet down the middle. The left side, put it away in a drawer. Only look at the right side. It will give you an idea about your behavior. As you keep reading, you will realize, hey, am I being so strict? Am I being so rigid? Am I being so harsh? His activities, his uh, behavior has gone into the drawer. Now it's only your behavior and it makes you sit up and think. When that happens, you automatically become a little more open 
to the other person's viewpoint. Maybe I should not be so strict. Maybe I should not be so harsh. These are such simple and such basic ways. But again, let me caution you. You have to practice it. One day you sit and do that. You won't even connect to it. You'll say, what well, is there something great? Nothing. Oh, yeah, I tried out. Yeah, nothing came out of it. That fellow is still horrible. And I don't like him. And you close the chapter. But if you do it on a regular basis, if it becomes a habit, it becomes part of your temperament and what you do, then you will realize how you, know, you will be able to get over. And in order to do that, I have another suggestion. When you are free, sit down and take a paper and pen. But most people today do not have a paper and pen. So open the notepad of your smartphone. And in that, start writing. What are the situations where you find yourself in adversity or in conflict? Similarly, who are the people with whom you find that you are at loggerheads or you are in conflict? When you become aware that these are the situations and these are the people with whom I have these issues, it becomes easier for you to isolate them, identify them, and work on them individually. There is no fixed answer to this. There is no one size fits all. So with each situation, with each person, you devise strategies. This person is important uh, uh, to me. Shika already has a whole list ready. Fantastic, Shika. I mean it. These are the type of people, you know, who can face any type of situations where you say, okay, let me make this uh, uh, list. What are the triggers? What causes, uh, you know, conflict and unpleasantness uh, uh, to me? If I do that, then I know that I can handle things uh, better. Unfortunately, in human relationships, most of, I wouldn't say most, many of us, tend to do what is referred to as firefighting. Only when a situation goes bad, only when I am in conflict with somebody, only when somebody is being bad to me, then I start thinking, how do I handle this uh, uh, situation? But if you are like Shika, whenever there is a possibility, whenever you have some free time, you start making a list and you have it available to you for you to browse and say, hey, this is what is it. In fact, when you are facing an unpleasant situation and you are aware of it. Now, I have to go and meet that old uncle of mine who is a very grouchy person. And he says also some nasty things. But for various reasons, I can't write him off. I have to go and meet him. I have to have this interaction with uh, uh, him. It also helps me to understand how my relationship with others goes. Right. Yes, Reno, I would like to uh, agree with you that the example that I've given for uh, sharing foods looks like a bargain more than uh, uh, empathy. I'll tell you why I said empathy. Does this person want to eat food sharp at one o'clock? I'm one of those people who wants a meal at one o'clock. I, I don't get it and I'm off mood. But I know so many people who say I want a good, nice you know, full meal. I don't know. It doesn't matter whether I get it at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. Now, to be able to understand the attitude, the preferences and the needs and wants of the others, that is what is empathy. Empathy is the skill by which you can actually bargain. The act is bargaining. I agree with you. But that bargaining you can do if you have empathy. Otherwise, you offer something to the other person which the other person doesn't want. How does it help? Please give a thought to this. And as usual, start off with your uh, you know, questions in the chat box. I will take just one minute off. And here is Seema to just update you on what's happening in Banjara. Hello. 
so many of these skills the life skills we are getting to understand and learn now at this age you know every day is a learning it's an ongoing process of course to work on yourself and so many tips which uh, ali and team keep giving from time to time i think helps uh, a lot of us uh, uh, you know sometimes i uh, wish that when i was younger i was a child i knew of these things when i was growing up as an adolescent i knew these things but it's okay uh, better late than never so if uh, you as a significant adult a parent or an educationist or you know anybody who deals with children and adolescents want to understand uh, you know how to be better role models how to inculcate these life skills so we coming up with this uh, program called certificate in child and adolescent development here we will be taking you through zero uh, you know from zero to 18 years the complete holistic development from all aspects and many of these life skills right which uh, you can inculcate in your children so here's a wonderful program it's starting on 26th of march it's an online program and and the best feature as usual in banjara is the hand holding so the mentoring system that comes along with it it's a very popular program which has been going on for uh, many years now so if you're more uh, uh, you know you want to know more about it please reach out Uh, to the numbers which uh, uh, you know sunita is putting up so please there are numbers given here also very very uh, wonderful program all the people who have done it uh, really you know uh, tell us that there are lots of skills that they learned about through this program and uh, yes um, with a heavy heart uh, our dcs 22 batch uh, this year is almost coming to an end uh, very soon so of course once a banjara it always a banjara so many of you here i can see a lot of dcs 22 students so this the association has just started right so yeah we'll be planning one month in camp for you soon so uh, be ready those of you who have missed it or even if you have come we will do one very soon so keep uh, uh, you know we will update you on that and uh, also uh, you know now that you know uh, what dcs you know not just counseling but so much of growth uh, self growth and development happens if you know of anybody else you think who will benefit the dcs 23 admissions have started and it's uh, wonderful uh, people are uh, you know already the admissions have started and we have started involving them in activities we had an hh talk so we after the talk we all sat down uh, you know in a group and discussed it so many activities have already started for dcs 23 So, if you think that somebody will benefit uh, from the uh, diploma in counseling skill program, uh, ask them to reach out uh, to us. The numbers are given here. So, yes, please keep uh, looking at our website. We keep doing a lot of stuff. So, all right, catch you again next Saturday. yes i am back to the second part of this uh, session which to me personally is much more interesting than the first part because in the first part i get to only hear my voice and see my face but in the second part i get to learn so much from you people right so we start with surekha saying that the best victory is where everyone wins how can we agree to disagree when we see a no deal situation So, like, you know, in my experience in life, I have seen a lot of people who say no deal, my way or the highway, as they say, right? When you have people like these, there are ways and means to get around them. So, when they start off by saying that this is what I want, I'm not compromising on it. For a minute. you can use the technique if you have flown kites in your childhood or even now you know when you have this competition and two people are flying kites and one wants to cut off the other what is taught to you is let your kite be your uh, you know string be loose allow the kite to float when the other kite comes in in its position then you pull so unless you allow the kite to float and the string to become lax you don't get that opportunity to pull and cut the other person's uh, uh, kite very similar thing you have to do in human behavior all you have to do is first pamper the person's ego okay you said no deal this is where you want it for the time being right now 
let's have it your way. The person thinks, I have won. The person is thrilled. That is when you slowly start getting around. In fact, one of the best ways to understand this, uh, Surika and everybody else, is that wonderful uh, uh, TV serial which came long back. I'm sure it's available on the internet. Yes, Minister. It's all about a secretary to a minister. The minister is a very unreasonable guy and a dumb fellow. He doesn't know what he is doing. And he keeps coming out with all sorts of ridiculous uh, decisions and situations. The secretary never says no to him. That's how the whole you know, serial has been titled. He starts off first by saying, yes, minister. And then you see in a very tactful manner how he takes that whole conversation through 360 degrees and finally gets his viewpoint. In a very subtle manner, it has been produced, very entertaining and very you know, hilarious also. So see if you can pull it out from the internet and watch that. This will give you certain uh, you know, tips. Right. Roshan says, worked in an organization and always happy as I would finish my department's work and get work from other departments. Always understanding what others are going through and help them cope with their work faster with the result of our department would always be called the efficient and understanding dot. Now, here is an example. Are you magnanimous enough to finish your department's work and get work from another department? Many people have that, you know, that egoistic thing. Why should I do it? I've done my work. I've done it efficiently. If those guys can't finish their work, that's their problem. Tomorrow, when you need some cooperation and you need some collaboration with them, you don't get it. So this is like an investment, you know, creating this win-win uh, situations. Ah, Shirin has a very interesting question. Is there, uh, ah, Sunita has already got the you know, poster of this uh, thing. Yes, Minister Jonathan Lynn and Anthony J. So you can... Uh, you know, download that and uh, watch it or hear it or whatever you want to do. But I will go to Shirin's uh, question. Is there a very thin line between compromise and a win-win situation that is collaboration? Yes. Sometimes the line is so thin that it can overlap over each other also. It doesn't matter. The point is, are we moving from compromise to collaboration? Are we going up that uh, you know, sloping graph? The more you are headed, there will never be a situation which is 100 by 100. But am I moving in that direction of not just compromising and saying you take 50%, I take 50%, but going on to more and more and better and better uh, situations. It's a continuous effort. You will realize that instead of being 50% happy and thinking that the glass is half empty, after a little bit of practice, you will get 60%, you will get 70%. And that's enough. You can take it forward uh, that way. See, this is a very brief uh, version of the same uh, graph. Satisfaction of A, satisfaction of B. Avoiding, compromising, collaborating. <laughs> okay. Navina says, how to overcome your own feeling that why I need to bend over first and accept initially the other person. Because I also get the feeling that if I bend now, I may mostly have to bend forward at the other times also. Yes, Navina, that can happen uh, to you. But I give you again the example of the kite. When I want to pull the kite and I want to cut his string, why am I letting go? Why am I slackening? Because that is a technique for getting things done. And when you do it consciously, saying that I'm doing it for a limited period of time, Till I get a better situation. Then you know that what you said, note that I may mostly have to bend forward at other times. No, you have to convince yourself that this is not what I'm going to be doing permanently. This is a technique. This is a strategy that I am adapting so that I can overcome the hurdle which the opposite person is creating. Because the more I try to push my way, the more adamant he also uh, gets, right? Chika has taken a line of Roshan's thoughts. How do you deal with people who ridicule you and point fingers at you and say you have an attention deficit, that you are people pleaser, that you are a wannabe, etc. The other day, 
I was in a friend's house and the uh, little child came to me and said, uh, you know, uncle, my brother called me stupid. And I was very happy. I said, yes, I am stupid. And I explained to my brother that stupid is a short form of stupendous, talented, unique person in demand. It is an acronym for that. And that fellow's jaw dropped. He didn't know what to do. And he said, yeah, I'm stupid, but you are not stupid. You get me? Very often we come across this situation. And here, one very important thing I'd like to share with you is treat yourself lightly. Do not, you know, take yourself so important. Even in answer to the previous question of Navina that, you know, I, why do I need to bend over? Why do I need to do this? Why is this person making these, uh, you know, ridiculing thoughts? Why is this person pointing fingers at me? Learn to take it in the stride. Learn to understand. There's also that simple thing, though, where they say that, uh, what is that? Uh, if you're pointing one uh, finger to somebody else, there are four fingers which are, you know, pointing back at uh, uh, you. So think of it that way. Who ridicules others? Who points fingers and others? Who makes these remarks like, you know, you are an attention deficit, you are a people pleaser, you are a wannabe. Somewhere that person is uncomfortable within himself or herself. Right? Sureka says when people show total disregard for the feelings of another, how do we engineer win-win uh, outcomes? Yes. See, in all aspects of human behavior, there is no such thing as success rate and getting 100 out of 100. This is not, not a board exam where nowadays we are seeing so many children getting 100 out of 100. And this year they broke records because some children got more than 100 out of 100. So we have you know, eventually crossed over to that uh, uh, situation, which is absolutely ridiculous. The same way as I believe that no child can score 100 out of 100 in an exam. In the exam of life also, you cannot score 100 out of 100 in relationships. So what do we do? One is I increase my tolerance capacity. I know that this person shows total disregard. This person just doesn't move. This person keeps putting me uh, down. So I have to build up, like we build up immunity, you know. I know that there's a lot of infection and there's a lot of virus floating around. So if I build up my immunity, then I know that the chances of that virus attacking me get less. Here you build up your mental strength as an immunity against uh, them. And despite doing all that, if finally you find that the person is just not responding, you have to work out some strategy on your own. If you can get rid of that person from your life, nothing like it. But in case that is not possible, mentally you switch off from that person and balance it by the good people around you. Don't forget that. For every one nasty character around you, there'll be five people who are good to you, who love you, who care for you. Sometimes we neglect them because we are so caught up with this nasty character. Keep that in mind. Okay. Renu says, is it necessary to react to people who are rude and ridicule us? No, that's what I was just explaining, Renu. It's not always necessary. Sometimes it's okay to give in. Sometimes it's okay to make it into a joke like this little girl said that, you know, I'm a stupendous, talented, unique person in demand. That is the acronym for stupid. Anything like that. In a lighthearted manner, in a manner where you show that it really doesn't matter to me. I'm not dependent on your appreciation or your praise. I know what I am. And I will not even get into arguments with uh, you. Exactly. As Satyan says that, you know, can we build humor element in these issues? It plays a very big role, Satyan. You'll be amazed that your sense of humor is the thermometer of your mental health. If your men, uh, you know, sense of humor goes down, you can't enjoy jokes on yourself. You can't take life lightly. You start getting irritated with the smallest of things. If your sense of humor goes down, it means your mental health is going uh, down. 
and that is why it is very important regardless of conflict situations regardless of anything else please continuously continue to build your sense of humor understanding the basic thing that sense of humor is your ability to laugh at yourself your ability to laugh with others and not at others it is your ability to look at life in a light hearted manner Roshan says empathy cannot be taught. It comes from within, spontaneously, genuinely. Only then you can be in that win-win situation. Yeah, there are different views. This is Roshan's view that empathy cannot be taught. But with all humility and modesty, I would like to say that I think I have taught empathy to hundreds of our uh, students who rightly or wrongly, they have no reason to flatter me, but they do say that, yes, after learning empathy through the DCS program or through counseling, we have managed to improve our quality of life where, you know, other people, I mean, I'm able to understand and relate to other uh, uh, people. Satyan, yes, I always crack jokes on myself in groups to break the ice. Keep it up, Satyan. You will be an excellent role model to so many others. You can lighten the situation. You can remove, you know, the uh, uh, seriousness of any uh, get together. And here is Sunita, as usual, very spontaneously on Split moment, she comes out with something which is so directly connected. Sense of humor is regarded as a sign of mental health, says Helen Cresswell. I don't know who she is, but I'll take her word for it. If, apart from excessive punning, which is another matter entirely. If you allow me to digress for a uh, minute, uh, uh, Sunita, there was this, uh, you know, very nice quote which uh, uh, they said that, you know, um, Albert Frederick said, change cannot be given to you. You have to bring your own change. And below that is written, Albert Frederick is a bus conductor from Moscow to Mormo in Goa. So he has put up this poster saying, change cannot be given to you all the time. You must bring your own change. But it sounds so profound, no? And because it is by Albert Frederick, it looks as though some Western philosopher of Stanford or Oxford must have uh, uh, said it. This is the lighter part of life, right? Noor says, after coming to Banjara, now when intentionally people try to irritate me, I keep quiet. So this is a change in my life, not replying back. So they are confused and getting irritated themselves. This is exactly what I meant. This is the gist of what it is. And I want you to hear it not from people like me because you'll say, oh, he will say whatever he wants, whatever me who's going through such tough times in life. Here you have Noor, a person who is a qualified engineer, who gave up a good career for the sake of her children, who has been a full-time homemaker, taking care of her family. And obviously there are people who will intentionally try to irritate her or to look down upon her. But if she has learned this skill, this is what I am talking about. Okay, Usha says, how to handle such people who always find mistakes in whatever I do sometimes feels like hell. First, strengthen yourself, Usha. Insulate yourself. Build up your own inner uh, strength. Use whatever technique comes to you. There is mindfulness. There is meditation. There is prayer. There is chanting. There are so many ways and means there is a workout you can do get into a hobby get into some creative arts so strengthen yourself and then rationalize whenever this person finds mistakes in you and shouts at you or criticizes you please take a notepad or a paper and pen and write down what the person said at that moment it will be very hurtful You'll be very disturbed. You'll be very irritated. Keep it. After some time, when you have calmed down, write down what is the reality. Am I really bad? Am I, have I really made that mistake? Or is this person only trying to criticize uh, me? Write down what your thoughts are on it. Rationalize your thoughts. And again, keep it away. Open it after a few more days or something and compare. And when you realize that what the person said is absolutely not true, if necessary, even show it to a trusted person and say, this is what this person said. This is what I feel. What do you think is right? And if that person is truthful and if the person is 
rational and the person cares for you, the person will say, yes, what you have written is right. That person is unnecessarily criticizing you. So you get a reinforcement. Go on practicing that till whatever the other person says hurts you much less. Right, Renu says empathy cannot come within unless they are exposed to difficulties. Yes, Renu. I would not only say difficulties, I would say variety of life situations. People who have lived in a very straight jacketed way, everything came their way. Good family, rich people, very good house, very caring parents, good school, good college, good job, good everything. Such people sometimes, I'm not saying always, have difficulty in empathizing because they don't know what goes through the mind of another person who has gone through, as you said, difficulties, ups and downs, challenges in life. So very often I say that if you have had hurdles, setbacks, if you had failures, please celebrate because they have taught you what life is about. They have strengthened you. They have brought you to that situation where you can face anything and everything because of whatever you have faced earlier. Right? Vikas says, at work, how to arrive at win-win situation when management is not in sync with your plan? One very simple thing I'd like to start off with, Vikas, is that when you say management, management is not uh, you know, a living being. There are human beings who constitute management. So you may have a board of directors, you may have a CEO, you may have a direct boss, you may have an HR person controlling you, you whatever it is. The first thing to do is to break them into human beings. The moment you put them all in one basket and say management, you find yourself a minority. You say, OK, my immediate reporting manager, how is this person? My CEO, how is that person? The board of directors which take strategic decisions, how are they? And the beauty of it is when you start breaking it up into individual human beings, inevitably you will realize that A is a very unreasonable uh, person, not in sync with my plans at all, very, very you know, unreasonable. But B is a little more reasonable. With C, maybe a little more effort and I can convince him. So start working on those who are more possibly amenable to being in sync with your plans. As you start winning over each one of them, your confidence and your joy will go up and your chances of getting people in your uh, inner side and working with the more rigid and the more unreasonable people, that also you know, improves over a period of uh, uh, time. A lot of people have faced this. The same way you are talking about a work situation. I have come across, for example, a girl who gets married and has to live with her in-laws. I have seen that girl when she comes for counseling, making statements like, my in-laws are very unreasonable. I cannot say anything to my in-laws. My in-laws are totally different and very bad to me. I tell them first, sit down, take a piece of paper. Write down who all are your in-laws. My father-in-law is there, my mother-in-law is there, my elder brother-in-law is there, my brother-in-law's wife is there. Okay. So your in-laws in constitute of, let's say, five people, right? They are five individual human beings. They are not robots that all five of them think in the same direction. Now start identifying who is the extreme, who is the moderate, and who is possibly more collaborative with you. Try it out. You will find maybe one out of those five to start with and then work your way up. So whether it's a family, whether it's a work situation with management issues, everywhere, if you deal with them on a human level, at an individual level, you will find that there are ways and means of getting across. If you put them all in one lump, they look so huge that you find that it is very difficult to break through with uh, uh, that. This is what, you know, we always keep complaining what the British did with Indians, divide and rule. Indians were in crores. British people who came here to rule over us were in thousands. 
how did they manage to rule uh, us if we had just turned around and you know started uh, chopping their heads off within days they would have all disappeared from here but they did succeed in controlling a giant country like india i think we can learn excellent you know tips and techniques on how to manage and how to you know deal with human uh, uh, beings i don't uh, you know subscribe to what they did and how they enslaved us and all that that's a different thing but that's history it is gone let's not even worry about that let's talk about the present and let's talk about the future what can be done and i assure you that a lot of things can be uh, done and here i would also like to add on one more uh, point see all the points which came up in the chat box were to do with people who are facing certain situations which are not very pleasant fine i would also like you to think about situations which are likely to happen i talk about the fact that you have to anticipate change you have to prepare in advance that in case a change comes in there's a nice quote which says hope for the best but prepare for the worst there's another very nice cute proverb which my grandfather used to tell me an arab proverb have faith in god but tie up your camel first so can we anticipate can we say that life will always have stresses there will always be some people who are not nice to me tomorrow a new person like that may come on the horizon have i mentally prepared myself have i emotionally strengthened my um, uh, situation yes all situations can be solved with empathy present uh, situations as i know i agree with uh, uh, you navina says beautiful guidance and tips of handling family and workplace i think when we break a group of individuals and deal with them one at a time it really helps it's always that way wherever you go every now and then i come across people who keep making these statements you know my neighbors are horrible people i don't talk to any of my neighbors my relatives ah, i'm fed up of my relatives i talk only to friends yeah here is another good uh, um, slide which uh, sunita has set up three levels of change management a smart person recognizes change a smarter person anticipates change and the smartest person creates change in different words this is also uh, put as you know the proactive people do not complain about the weather they create their own weather believe me it is possible maybe not in the macro sense of uh, weather all over the city or all over the country but the weather immediately around you and here when i say weather i am talking about the ambience the type of uh, you know Uh, harmony or the type of uh, smoothness or the type of interactions that are taking place you can do it one at a time one step at a time slowly patiently you have to keep working towards those uh, uh, things all i can say is it is difficult but it is not impossible Sunita has one more slide left over. Can I have a look at uh, that which you had put up right in the beginning? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Let me wind up with showing you this uh, uh, slide which uh, Sunita has downloaded for us. Problem solving wheel. It is called. Let's take from the top. right hand that is afternoon you start with 1 o'clock 2 o'clock right apologize wherever you are in the wrong straight away apologize count to 10 avoidance i told you no take time calm down go to some other activity distract your mind for the time uh, uh, we use an i message i feel sad i feel irritated i am disappointed not you walk away and let it go sometimes small things you know don't sweat the small stuff as they call it 
ask them to stop. Okay, you've told me something. Let me mull over it. Let me think over it. Please don't continue with that. I'll get more confused. Okay, you've criticized, you've said something. Just hold on, I will see. Wait and cool off. If possible, ignore it or go into problem solving, which is a topic by itself, which we shall deal with on some other Saturday. Till then, have a wonderful time, a wonderful weekend and a wonderful week. I shall be seeing you again next Saturday.